All right, you guys, so Sarasota is currently underwater. We just had Hurricane Debbie come through, which was a level category one, which really has nothing to do with the amount of water. Uh, category one through five is basically determined on the wind speed of the storm. Has nothing to do with the rainfall. So basically, the storm was a category. Well, it was a tropical storm when it came through next to Florida, and then turned into a, a category one hurricane when it made landfall in the Panhandle. So I'm getting ready to show you a little bit about it and what's going on. seen water like this in Sarasota County, never had water in their homes here before, but saw feet of water in their homes in some areas. Some are just now drying out with residents trying to clean up and do what they can, but others in this subdivision off Parma Boulevard remain with water standing inside. This is off Palmer, but it's pretty much widespread, um, Sarasota County, and, uh, Quite a few people are upset that the fact that the uh, with the the government with the county government there, and a lot of people think that it's because of the the recent all the development here in Florida and the building. So let's take a look. Many of these homeowners did not have flood insurance because they weren't required to. Not a flood zone. Fox Routine's Kimberly Cuisant took a tour today with State Senator Joe Gruders. He tells her he's now asking the state for two things. From the back of a resident's Humvee. Well, this is unlike any storm I've ever been through. Senator Joe Gruders and I got a look at flooding in the Sarasota County neighborhood of Laurel Meadows. You just got a feel for the families that were impacted. Lives are literally ruined. Senator Gruders grew up in Sarasota County. He wants answers as to why neighborhoods from Bay of Vista to here and beyond flooded. I'd like the state to have an investigation to determine what happened here. Why are some of these neighborhoods getting flooded like this? Then this senator is actually calling for investigations into this because they did water releases from the Manatee River um, while the storm was going on, and actually right after. And while the, after the storm hit, a lot of people weren't flooded until they actually did these water releases. We're a couple of days after the storm, it's still halfway up the house, halfway in the houses. Many homeowners like Jeffrey Skimmerhorn didn't have flood insurance. We're almost 30 feet above sea level. Um, no, it's, it was never required, never suggested. This was supposed to be his family's dream home, which quickly took on water starting Sunday night. I call the county almost every hour on the hour saying that's getting higher. Can somebody do something? Is there a drain plug? Is there a pump station not working? And everything fell on deaf ears. Skimmerhorn can only wonder if new developments going up impacted his. Seeing all these housing developments go up and they get built up higher than everybody else, there should be a moratorium on any building until all properties and that have been around for a while can handle such an event. See, this is the problem when you start bringing in new regulations for home building. They surpass any of the regulations from the previous neighborhoods and houses that were built. So when they build a new house, they have to build it up higher. So what happens when your neighbor's house is five feet higher than your house and then a bunch of water comes? Who's going to get flooded? You know, where all that water has to go somewhere. A mile down the road off South Leewind Drive, part of the neighborhood remained underwater. The water came up to right there, just a little bit over. 71-year-old Robert Gondek worked to clean up what he could. This house is a mess. Carpet and drywall will need to be ripped up. Part of the ceiling caved in two. No, we don't have flood insurance, unfortunately, so it's going to come out of our pockets. His wife has owned the home for 45 years and never experienced this. Just clean up one room at a time. 
And so they keep talking about how the water is going down and receding, and maybe it is in some areas, but that's kind of why I wanted to get the make this video and try to get the word out and anybody that might see this video, that they are anticipating the Mayaka River is going to breach, and that is possibly going to happen between Thursday and throughout the weekend, so 8-8. 2024 and throughout the weekend. So anybody who lives in these areas and wants to evacuate, maybe start thinking about that and making your plans while the water is low enough. And let's take a look at some water rescues. Has started to go down. This is off Bay of Vista. Crews there have rescued more than 500 people from their homes. Today they went back out to try to get the folks who didn't want to leave. Fox 13's Kimberly Cuisan was right there in the middle of it all day yesterday. Joins us live again from Sarasota. Kim, that was really something. I know they're not done yet, though. Uh, the water is finally going down, right? And uh, the damage, I just can't imagine. Well, Mark, the water is starting to go down off the Bay of Vista, but something Omar and I want to show you here right behind me, this is Greer Avenue. And as you can see right here, really that water from the Flippy Creek really just extends past that area. And there's so many who've experienced loss. Many homeowners are still in disbelief. Just look right there, that fire hydrant is still completely underwater. And some residents know now that they have lost everything. Yeah, this was up to my knees. From so I've gotten a lot of um, information actually from the Sarasota County government um, page here. Some people were wanting to send it to me through Facebook, but I don't have Facebook or social media. So I just went on to YouTube and I you can find it there, Sarasota County government official um, page here. And they have a lot of you know, updates with the storm water, current conditions. So, um, they also have um, an interactive map up now that I wanted to show you guys if this might help anybody out. The Sarasota County Storm Debbie reporting map is now available. We encourage community members to view road closures, damage reports, flooding reports, and windshield damage assessments by visiting the map here. It's easy to navigate and you can see a global view of what is going on within the county. To view a certain area, you can simply zoom in using your mouse or the buttons on the side here. The different icons indicate issues that have been reported to Sarasota County that we are working hard to address. To view what the issues are, you can simply click on the icon and a window will pop up right here. You can see that there is reported flooding in this area. Now, if you would like to see roads where road underwater signs have been deployed, simply click on these hazard signs and this will show you that a road underwater sign has been deployed here at Bay of Vista Street. Now, if you see an issue that needs to be added to the map, our 311 center can help put that on the map for you. Simply call 311. If you have any questions, please visit us at scgov.net or give our 311 center a call. Okay, let's go back to this story because I'm really curious what area this is in. Uh, in Sarasota, we have a very large Amish community here. Um, this might be over by Yoder's. They have a very good restaurant. They're famously known for their pies for the holidays. They <laughs> People will line up all the way down the street just to get a couple of pies. They have really great food, and it's a really great community. So let's see what this lady has to say. My knees. From the outside and inside of Lorana Hostetler's home, a water line remains. All my interior doors look like this. An unwanted reminder of what yeah. Debbie left behind. Oh, it was up to here. Water remains in her dryer, freezer, and pots and pants. Devastating. It's like my brain can't even quite wrap its mind around what really all this means. That's my husband trying to call me. She and her husband have owned the home off Gerhard Street for nine years. They've never experienced anything like this. It does make you feel a little scared. Is it going to happen again? The couple was in the middle of home upgrades as the water poured in. She tried to save what she could. It was so completely out of my 
control. Like, I'm a type of person that I need to fix things. I can fix things. No, there was nothing I can do. It just kept raining and it kept getting worse. Across the way from Lorena's home, off Bay of Vista, Officer Jordan Gray Davis and Public Works employee David Young navigated an airboat through Pinecraft. Definitely the flooding has gone down some, um, but it's, you know, it's still kind of moving with the current. Uh, water is rushing in from the, the lake and the river. The pair from Northport are part of a joint task force working with Sarasota Police, Florida Urban Search and Rescue Task Force 6, and others to rescue those still stuck without power and water in their homes. But there are quite a few people that we have evacuated um, and their houses are, you know, underwater and destroyed. Okay, so that was over off Gerhardt Street, but let's... Uh Let's just keep in mind and keep all these people in our thoughts and our prayers of people that are struggling and going through a hard time right now. Uh, let's try to just love each other and help each other and try to do it in everyday life, not just when a uh, disaster comes. I know that we, uh, I went through quite a, a lot when Hurricane Ian came through and spent 10 days with no power and no water. So, um, but I didn't lose I didn't lose everything like a lot of people did then and a lot of people have now. So let's keep them in our thoughts and prayers and um, you know, get to know your neighbors. You know, people we always want to support everybody in afar. You know, we want to send all this money overseas and help all you know, everybody else, but we don't even know our neighbors' names. So let's try to let's try to get to know each other and help each other out and be there for each other. And I, I wish the best for everybody that's going through through this right now. And uh, if you can evacuate, if you if you live by the Mayaka River or that's going to affect you, let's try to um, let's try to get out of those areas while we can. All right, guys.